stem cells play a role in protecting the body from disease in the sense that they accelerate healing after injury. There's a specific type of stem cell that circulates in the blood system. It's called the endothelial progenitor cell. Now, this type of cell, what its function is, is when the blood vessel is injured, the, uh, so for example, like an atherosclerosis, the circulating endothelial progenitor cell helps to heal it. There's many correlations that if you have low levels of circulating endothelial cells, then you have a much higher chance of developing a heart disease and stroke. Because these cells, they circulate around and they try to heal the blood vessel, the cardiovascular system. We also know that after a patient has a stroke or has a heart attack, these circulating stem cells increase in the blood, substantially increase, because they are trying to heal the damage that has occurred. So the study we're talking about today assessed the effect of smoking on circulating endothelial progenitor cells. What the investigators did was they took 14 people who didn't smoke and 15 people who smoked. Of the 15 people who smoked, 10 of them were considered light smokers, smoking less than 20 cigarettes a day, and 5 of them were considered heavy smokers, smoking more than 20 cigarettes a day. The smokers were asked to quit smoking for the period of a month, and then after the month, they were allowed to start smoking again, again if they pleased, which all 15 did. Now, what happened was in the study is the first series of experiments, blood was taken from people who smoke and people who don't smoke, and the levels were compared between the non-smokers, the light smokers, and the heavy smokers, the levels of the stem cells. So, as you can see in this figure, people who did not smoke had a lot higher levels of the stem cells, the stem cells being CD34 positive, 133 positive, and CD45 negative, as a marker of the circulating endothelial progenitor cells. So as you can see, the people who, who smoked, they had less of these stem cells, and the heavy smokers had less than the light smokers. Now, very interestingly, if you assess the stem cell levels with another system, and this system, you take the blood, and instead of looking at markers, you actually look at the ability of the stem cells to make cells that look like blood vessels. So if you use this system of detecting circulating stem cells, as you can see, the healthy people had a lot, the people who smoked, uh, who smoked were, were light smokers had less, and the people who were heavy smokers, you couldn't see almost any cells. And then here is the same data presented in the figure of a graph. So, this brings an interesting question. What happens when you quit smoking? So, when you look at these people, at uh, people uh, after quit, before quitting smoking, you can see on the y-axis, you can see that they had less number of stem cells. And then, in the two weeks after quitting, the stem cell number increased. And then four weeks after quitting, the stem cell number increased even more. Then, four weeks after starting to smoke again, the number of stem cells dropped. So what this study means, obviously we know smoking is bad for us, and with the study sheds new light on how smoking may be causing all of this atherosclerotic diseases by topping the stem cells. The investigators didn't know exactly how the smoking caused this. In my mind, there are several different possibilities. One is smoking causes oxidative stress and low-grade inflammation, and this is associated with inhibition of the stem cells. So that was one important thing. But the other important thing is that these level of stem cells, of circulating stem cells, they can be modulated, they can be increased or decreased by different activities that we do. So I think the study is very important because it's teaching us that the stem cell compartment and our stem cell health is something that we may actually have some level of control over and by understanding this and, and testing for it, we may be able to prevent diseases before the actual disease process occurs. Thank you very much.